All right, this is Mr. H, and I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the refraction tank lab. Um, in years past, we would have you actually do this in class with real lasers in a tank made of water. Um, very fortunately, uh, FET has this simulation that is essentially identical to the lab we would run. Maybe just a couple small tweaks here and there. So you'll follow the link uh, to the FET sim. It will look something like this when you land there. Just go to intro and you'll see this. The very cool thing about this is you've got this laser here that we can fire from, if you look, air which is the original setup. We're starting in air. It's starting in air, 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 and then it hits the water, and then it passes into the water, so we go from air to water. Okay, this idea, this changing of direction is what we call refraction. This dark red beam changes direction. It actually bends a little bit. Okay, you're also gonna see this other beam here. It's a lot lighter. This is a bit of ref uh, reflected light. Okay, you'll notice it does follow the law of reflection. We don't care about that bit of light here for this particular lab. We're gonna go ahead and ignore that for now. Okay, so if you look at your lab handout, um, it's gonna look something like this, refraction of light. Obviously, we don't have real lasers here, so this warning doesn't apply. But if you look, your setup looks a lot like this diagram here. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be firing our laser from air into water. And what you're gonna be measuring is there's an air angle and a water angle. So if you read your directions here, you're gonna be filling in this data table. So it's already preset, which is the, uh, the air angles we're gonna be using. So we're gonna start at zero degrees, five, 10, 15, etc. And then you're going to determine what angle the laser um, moves through the water at, okay, after it's changed direction. Once you have those values, then in these columns here, you will be taking uh, the sine of those air angles and the sine of the water angles. We'll talk about that shortly. So um, let's say we're doing, I don't know, the fourth one down, air angle 15 degrees. What's that going to look like? Well, you've got your protractor here set up. If you don't have it in, you simply grab the protractor, throw it in on the normal line. You're gonna line it up on the normal, and you're gonna line it up along the edge of where the water and the air come together. So you see how I have that there? That's what you need to do. Now we're gonna fire the uh, laser in at 15 degrees. That's relative, make sure this is lined up a little bit. There we go. Relative to the normal, right? The normal is this dotted line. It makes 90 degrees with the water and air surface. So we're gonna take our beam, we're gonna fire it in at five, 10, 15 degrees. Okay, and well, I've got my air angle. Oh, don't do that. There we go, I've got my air angle which is 15 degrees, and now I'm gonna look down in here, and I'm gonna determine what my water angle is. And if you look, it's zero, five, it's roughly 10 degrees. So we can come back here, right? My air angle was 15, my water angle was 10. Then in your calculator, making sure it's in degree mode, not radians, degree mode, you're gonna find the sine of 15 degrees and the sine of 10 degrees and enter those in. And you're gonna do that for all of your angles up to 80 degrees. Uh, once you do that, you're going to have all of your data, and then uh, right after this video here, there's going to be another video on how to make your graph using graphical analysis. All right, so now once you have your data table filled in, there are two extra little questions in here uh, that do uh, point to a pretty important concept that we'll be talking about um, a little bit later here, but we want to introduce it now. So if you take a look here, you're going to move the slider to zero degrees below the water. So what we need to do is we want our laser starting in water and going into the air. So you're going to have to sort of change it up here a bit. We're going to go, so this obviously is, if you look, it's in the air. We need to flip it. So we need to go from water to air, okay? And what they say is you're supposed to take your laser and fire it in at zero. So when I fire my laser in, it's coming in at zero to the normal and passing through at zero to the normal. Then they say we're supposed to take, right, our laser and we're sort of firing it in here. And what you should see is now you've got your laser, it's refracting but also reflecting here. And you're gonna take your laser and you're gonna, right, if you put it at 60, right, something different happens. Okay, what they're asking you to do is figure out what angle Right, does it change from this 
to this, okay? And we're gonna figure out what that angle is. We call that critical angle. So go ahead and do that setup as well. Determine what that critical angle is and enter that in your lab. Um, and once you've done that, the data table and the graph, you are done and ready to submit. Once you've recorded all of the angles that your laser makes with the normal, you'll need to find the signs of those angles. In order to do that, you need to be in degree mode in your calculator. You can reach degree mode as you see on the screen here. Once your signs have been calculated, you can go to your iPad, open graphical analysis, click create experiment, and choose manual entry. From there, you'll need to input your data into your columns. Uh, remember our X and Y columns, we want to go ahead and change those out to the values uh, designated within the lab instructions. So simply double click on the top of each column and from there you can go to column options and change out the labels for your X and Y columns as you see uh, what I'm doing here. Make sure you put the correct value in the correct column. It's a very easy mistake to switch those, uh, and it happens more often than you'd think. From there, you can go ahead and take your sine of water and sine of air angles and go ahead and just input those into the cells. Simply double-click on a cell, and then your keyboard should pop up. I'm only going to put in a few values here, just enough to get some data points so that we can do our data analysis. You'll notice that you have some points start to show up on that graph as you enter your data into the table. Once your points are all there, simply hold on with your finger on the lower left corner and drag across the graph. It will highlight all of your points in gray. Click Curve Fit and choose Linear. Line will drop over the top and you'll have that box with all the information you need. Also click in the lower left hand corner and that will open Graph Tools. From there you can pick a new or add a new title for your graph. Make sure you do Dependent versus Independent. Once your graph is titled, you want to stay in one graph mode. Click the share button in the upper right corner and we'll go ahead and send this out to Notability. What you'll notice here is that once it's in Notability, it's a PDF file and you'll have that, but we don't have the data table. We cannot import the data table as a PDF, unfortunately, but what we can do is we can go back to our graphical analysis and choose only our data table and go ahead and just do a screen capture. So now we have that in our photos. If you go back to Notability and in that same note file we were working on earlier with our graph, you can go ahead and add a photo from your photos by just clicking that uh, plus button in the upper right corner there and you can drop in that picture of our data table. Make sure you scale it up so that we can see it. So now you have on the first page your graph, the second page your data table. And then make sure you do uh, find the equation of the line and annotate that over the top of your graph. And then lastly, you'll be ready to share this out to your instructor through Schoology. So just simply click in that upper left corner, click the share button, make sure you pick PDF, hit share note, and at that point you can select Schoology, and there will be a live assignment to which you can go ahead and submit this file that is obviously uh, submitted separately from the actual lab packet itself. And that's the lab. If you have any questions, make sure you read it and ask your teacher if you have any further questions. Good luck and thanks for watching.